rooted in Christ. What is it and how do you get it? Welcome, Sandy here from the Creator's Classroom and Growing in Joy Women's Bible Study Group. This week, we are talking about seed and germination and how that plays into becoming rooted in Christ. Did you know that some kind of seed is being planted in your life every single day? The question is, what kind of seed? There's an old saying from back in the 1980s, I believe, garbage in, garbage out. And it had to do with what you put into a computer is only what you're going to get out of it. But that actually reflects some scripture that says that how we think is who we become. And that's from Proverbs 23, 7. So what is germination? That's important in our study of being rooted in Christ. Let me just read um, this statement about germination from West Virginia University Extension Service. Germination is the process by which a plant grows from a seed into a seedling. Now, a seedling is a small infant plant. Seeds remain dormant until conditions are favorable for germination. All seeds need water, oxygen, and optimal temperature to germinate. So <clears throat> when God plants seeds in our lives, he wants that to germinate and to become something that can be seen like a plant. It's interesting that in the Old Testament, um, the Jewish people were told not to plant two kinds of seeds together. And so we want to talk about two kinds of seeds today. So what kind of seeds are being planted in your life today in the soil of your heart? So this is um, the online Bible study guide. It's free. Um, I will put a link to it in the uh, comments below the discussion. Um, and if you're watching on YouTube, it will be there also. So we are in week three. The seed and germination. On day nine, we talk about weed seeds. These are important to know about. Um, if you've ever done gardening, weed seeds are a problem, a big problem if you don't keep them under control. So you don't want to ever underestimate the power of weeds in your life. Once they get started, they drop more and more seeds. And before long, your life is a total mess. So where do these seeds come from? Lots of places, social media, websites and magazines, music, jokes, TV, you name it. And it's not that all of those things are bad, but we have to evaluate them in the light of scripture. So you were asked to read Galatians 5, 16 through 21. So I'm going to pull that up here on the screen from Bible Gateway. I will put that link in the comments also. Now here's what this says. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For they are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Now this is going to talk about the weeds that we don't want in our lives. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So some of those things are really obvious, um, and we can see it in our culture. We can sometimes see it in our homes, depending on um, what kind of people we live with. Um, and other things are a lot more subtle, 
like envy and strife. So can you identify any works of the flesh listed in these verses that are common in our modern society? That was the first question, and I already listed some of those. Um, and then question two, consider a personal experience where you witnessed or experienced the harmful effects of one of these works of the flesh. How did it impact individuals and relationships? I have personally witnessed how anger and resentment and bitterness can lead to total destruction of the family, of relationships in the church. It is a horrible, horrible weed. You don't want it in your life. Bitterness will destroy you from the inside out and it's like poison. It'll just affect all those around you in time. So let's go on to day 10. This is weed seeds continued, but this is on a more personal level. The first question asks, are there any works of the flesh present in your own life? What steps can you take to turn away from these behaviors and seek the Spirit's guidance? I know for myself, sometimes envy is a problem. Um, I see how people are having success and I wish I had the same success. Um, sometimes um, I wish that I had some of the things that they had and I realize that it's not correct. And so what kind of steps need to be taken for myself personally? I have to remind myself that God has placed me where I am in the life that I have and I need to learn to be content because he has a perfect plan for me where I am. And it's only through fulfilling God's will for my personal life will I truly be happy and have joy. So I have to remind myself that in Philippians, um, it says that I have learned to be content for I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So I can be content. And then uh, question number two, think about the cultural influences around you. How can you intentionally counteract negative influences and promote a more positive and spirit-led environment? Well, we have to control those things that are coming into our minds. Those are things that are seeds and they will affect us whether we realize it or not. Um, so if we find ourselves all of a sudden in the middle of some social media that is planting seeds of envy or strife or anger, we need to scroll past those things and not let them influence us. Um, if we are watching something on TV that is not um, healthy for us spiritually, we need to shut it off. That's hard to do, but we need to do it. And then um, question number three, how can prayer be a powerful tool in overcoming these challenges? Well, truthfully, our help comes from the Lord. That is where we can overcome the challenges that we face. And so prayer is simply talking to the Lord. And if all we say is, Lord, I need your help. I can't do this by myself. That is a prayer of submission to his will. And so at the end of that day, you are asked to say a prayer, asking the Lord to help you recognize and resist the subtle, subtle temptations associated with the works of the flesh. And then on day 11, we moved on to good seed. And the parable of the sower, which we started out with in this study, tells us that the seed is the word of God itself. That was in Luke 8, 11. And um, when you open up a package of garden seeds, they really don't look like anything. They're shriveled. They're usually brown. And they truly look dead. But inside is a live seed germ waiting for the right conditions to um, to sprout and grow. 
And so you were asked to read several passages of scripture and find out what God says about the seed that he has that he wants to plant in your life. So the first scripture was Isaiah 55, 11. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. And the next verse is um, Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And then the last scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God or the woman of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. So what does the Bible say about its seed? First of all, it's productive. It always accomplishes something. And it's living. It's active. And finally, it's inspired by God and intended for our training to help us be the people that God wants us to be. And then we move on to day 12. Um, <clears throat> in the Blue Letter Bible, I showed you how to use that uh, last session in week two of the study, and we were looking at how you can understand what words meant in the original language. And so the word word is derived from the Greek, and in English, it means something said. That's kind of obvious. But included in that is the thought behind it. And so when we go to the word of God, we not only want to see what's written on the pages there, but we want to understand what did God really intend for us? What was his motive for giving us this information? You were asked on day 12 to read um, some scriptures. So we will look at those. John 20, 31. Remember, this is the reason that God has given us his word. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Psalm 119, 9 through 11. How can a young man or woman keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And then Philippians 3.10 that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and may share his sufferings becoming like him in his death. Second Peter 1, 3. His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence. And finally, Romans 12, 2, do not be conformed to this world. So in other words, don't let those seeds from the world, those weed seeds, don't let them come into you. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So everything that God wants for us is good. His motives are good. God is good. And so what are his motives in having us 
read his word? Well, first of all, he wants us to be saved. He wants us in his family. That's a wonderful thing. And then he wants to help keep us from sin because sin keeps us from God. And third, he wants us to know him. When you meet somebody new, you want to get to know more about them, people that you like. You, you just, you want to be spend time with them and you want to learn what they like and what they don't like. And it's just a beautiful thing. And God wants us to get to know him. And then also uh, that scripture in 2 Peter, we are given everything that we need as a child of God to be able to live life for him in a successful way. And finally, all of that happens by renewing our minds. And that's what we read in Romans 12 too. Our minds are the fertile ground. It's, it's the place where seeds are first planted. And we don't want those weed seeds in there. We want the good seed of God's word. It will help us be the people that God wants us to be. So the last question is, on a personal level, how are you doing accepting those seeds into your life? Ponder that. Think about it. I hope you'll join us next week. We will be talking about strong roots and how those are important in our life. And if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, like the video, share it with a friend, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.